Hey everybody, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing great. We're continuing uh, the Quran annotation review of the first time I read the Quran. We're in Surah 26, picking up on Shurara, and we left off on 112. And before we get started, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Nirajim Bismillah Rahman Rahim. He said, And what do I know as to what they do? Their account is only with my Lord, if ye could but understand. I am not one to drive away those who believe. I am sent only to warn plainly in public. Just to warn plainly in public. They said, If thou didst not, O Noah, thou shalt be stoned to death. He said, O my Lord, truly my people have rejected me. Judge thou then between me and them openly. And deliver me and those of the believers who are with me. So we delivered him and those with him in the ark filled with all the creatures. Oh, so the ark, Noah's ark, is also an Islamic uh, stance as well. Okay. Therefore, we drowned those who remained behind. Verily, in this is a sign, but most of them do not believe. And verily, thy Lord is he, the exalted in might. Most merciful. Okay, so it gives us the example of how you can be mocked by your own people, but if the Maker decides to preserve you, you will be preserved. It's basically what I get from it. Now, 151. And follow not the bidding of those who are extravagant. <sighs> okay, okay. So, this one is really interesting. Why? Because, let's just take a modern example. So, who's the extravagance in my context? Well, we have a lot of upper elite, very woke liberals, wealthy liberals, Hollywood types, who are advocating more restrictions and lockdowns of the economy, right? And they're the ones who kind of influence people on a mass scale, right? So people will do what they say. And what's interesting is that how quickly the people are getting very angry at any religious institution that tries to open up so that the people can worship, even if they're socially distanced. Um, it's quite strange. People are getting angry at priests who say, at least here in the Bay Area and other places, that prayer is essential. They're getting People are getting the atheists, the secularists, they are getting very, you know, forward about, no, it's not essential. You don't need that. Stay home. And it's something to really think about. Because in the Quran, if you think about it, it's like saying, don't just blindly follow those who have all the pompous pageantry behind them. Because oftentimes, we feel like those people know everything simply because they have more objects surrounding them. And they're able to dish out money at anything they want. They can just throw money at something and it appears. So, the bidding, the directions, you know, it's like, do you, just because someone is rich doesn't mean they're automatically right. Now, if you're asking an economist who got wealthy on, you know, certain trades and stuff, okay, has a point. But everyone has their limits, right? But we do often think that those who have the most should have the most say. And it just is not the case. Truly. At least in my view. So that's something that stood out to me right now when I just reviewed my memory. It's beautiful. 160. The people of Luth rejected the apostles. Behold their brother Luth said to them, Will ye not fear God? I am to you and an apostle worthy of all trust. So fear Allah and obey me. No reward do I ask of you for it. My reward is only from the Lord of the worlds. Of all the creatures in the world will ye approach males and leave those whom Allah has created for you to be your mates. Nay, ye are a people transgressing all limits. And then on 175, And verily thy Lord is he, the exalted in might, most merciful. And then 177, I just underlined Shuaib. And then 181, 
cause no loss to others by fraud. So, fraud is something that I see a lot now with scam robocallers. They usually have like a accent from India, usually. I don't know why. Maybe India and their telemarketing departments, they're allowing software to, you know, bypass blocking and they scam people and say like, the IRS is after you or... They say really weird things, sound professional, and then when you talk to them, you find out it's fake. Um, I've gotten really rude with some of these people, but they're fraudsters. They try to get your information so that they can uh, uh, steal your identity and do weird things. It's a phenomenon now that is so preying upon old people in the United States that I really hope we pass laws that allow companies where people are doing frauds like that like if india is having people like let's say they have a mass group of people right and they have rooms where they have legitimate jobs and software where they're allowing them to prank call american citizens there should be a punishment for that nation for having actions that defraud americans and then domestic people for example uh, calling their fellow citizens and doing scam things like that, I think there should be, you know, maximum penalties. I really don't like financial crimes, and a lot of financial crimes happen through fraud. So, again, the Quran speaking about that is beautiful, because it's true. It's really wrong to do. People say that only violent crime is bad, but financial crime is pretty awful because of the mental stress it induces. It's quite terrible. And weigh with scales true and upright. And withhold not things justly due to men, nor do evil in the land working mischief. So you're working mischief in the land? So are you doing things that are unjust? People really have to look at their actions. Are you doing mischief? Or are you removing a revolution? Or are you spreading malice? Are you spreading chaos and anarchy? What are you actually spreading? Right? And to others, if a majority of people see your actions as mischief, even though you feel like you're divinely right, you have to examine your behavior, right? Don't withhold things justly due to men. If they've earned it, they've earned it. Uh, like if you're a boss and you have some type of stigma against one of your workers for something, but they've earned their right for that promotion or that benefit or something, give it to them. Somebody's earned their vacation days, give it to them, right? It's like there's all different examples, but you can't withhold something that someone's earned. It's very wrong, in my view. 200. Thus have we caused it to enter the heart of the sinners. They will not believe in it until they see the grievous penalty. But the penalty will come to them of a sudden while they perceive it not. Now that one is very potent to me because... We always think that we're going to be able to perceive the next move, right? It's a survival mechanism that I believe we have developed, which was necessary, and also a gift. An instinctual gift we've also been given. You can look at it in a number of ways, with various overlapping nuances. I understand, okay? But when I think about how just how much shifting is happening, you just don't know where everything's going to go, especially right now. And people purposely making it more chaotic on purpose. You realize like, oh, okay. Uh, there's many ways to fail and there's a lot of traps. Gotta watch out for that, right? Gotta really work on all kinds of perception. There's different types of perception. Being able to re read a room. But the penalty from the maker is so advanced and beyond our comprehension that it, we won't be able to. And I think we have to realize that. I think many people do. I know I have. Especially so. You never know what's going to happen. What pillars fall and where bricks are being laid. You just never know. And you got to be able to adapt. And make sure you're not one of the people who... It's going to feel one of those surprise penalties, right? Truly makes you think. Truly makes you think.